What's the crack lads? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be showing you guys how to train up defenders most effectively, right? And how to get the best out of them on the pitch, right? So if you're training them wrong or if you're struggling with a certain player, this video is for you. We're going to cover every single play style, right? Destroyer, build up, attacking and defensive full backs, full back finisher, and of course the much slept on extra frontman. Now, I will be doing an individual video per play style for every position. But that will be at eFootball 2025's launch because they are going to be switching things up of how the players act on the pitch. And we know AI is going to be changing as well, right? But for today, we are going to be focusing on different players and how to train them most effectively. We do have the free reset. That's going to be a big change for eFootball 2025 going forward. It's always going to be free, right? So we're going to show you how to train up the players and why you should train them in a certain way. Let's get straight into it. All right, so I'm going to have a couple of graphics popping up on the screen throughout this video, right? So you can kind of see some key stats, some key builds, and some key information for each position. And I'll go into that in a very much a deep dive when we get eFootball 2025 out and launch, right? But for today, we are going to start with Cordoba, or Cordoba, who is an extra front man. Now, extra front man, as you're seeing on screen there, it does exactly what it says there. It's not as attack and base as it sounds. The definition there, it does kind of skew a little bit that I think with Cordoba especially, he definitely is a player that's been slept on quite a bit. Now, even by me, right? And we're going to show you a quick little build here. We don't need much into any of these stats here or these progression points. It's mostly going to be with extra frontmen. I would say it's mostly going to be kind of like an all-out attack or defensive option that is very, very similar to like a build-up, right? Extra frontmen and build-up are very interchangeable. So if you're used to playing with build-up, you can actually train these cards very effectively and very easily like build-ups, right? You're going to have very high aggression with this card. You're going to have really, really amazing defensive stats and speed and acceleration and physical contact is going to be perfectly balanced at around 80 apiece, right? Now, obviously, there's extra front men like uh, Bastoni that you can get in as well. He's going to have a similar kind of build. You've got that 80 acceleration. You've got 80 plus physical contact and jump and heading. And then, of course, you've got your tackling, defensive awareness, aggression, and defensive engagement. So if you are playing an extra front man, it is a nice AI play style to have, but I definitely think it's probably sixth in most importance at the moment or where the game has gone, right? So that is extra frontman done and dusted if you're training up. Next up, we have Hakimi, who is going to be our fullback finisher, right? So if you think of fullback finishers, even though... Think of Philip Lamb, right? When Philip Lamb used to play for Munich, or even uh, Kimmich, if Kimmich is playing right back earlier on in his career or whatever, right? Fullback finishers, in my opinion, are very similar to defensive fullbacks, but they don't have the defensive stats, if that makes sense. You need speed, you need acceleration, you need him covering the gaps, but he's also kind of a chance creator deep from the back, right? So if you've got just the stopper as a DMF, this is kind of where you want Hakimi or somebody to go like this. Again, I don't really rate these fullbacks, honestly. Um, I feel like at this stage in the game, you know, there's two really, really key uh, players that you're going to be using defensively. And that's kind of, I think, where the game is at a lot of the time um, with this. But that is the progression you can follow there if you want. 0, 2, 11, 6, 5, 0, 9. Nothing into goalkeeper 1 or shooting or aerial strength. That is going to give you a really fast kind of manual defensive type player that can still play a bit of ball in the middle of the pitch based on his AI. But again, I don't really rate this. And unless you're badly stuck and you don't have any defensive or attacking fullbacks, I would probably steer clear of this the same way as extra front. All right, so next up, we are going to take a look at an attacking fullback. And Trent Arnold, Ar Trent Alexander-Arnold is going to be our man here that we look at. If you look at his stats here with this build, it's a very, very nice build. 0, 5, 5, 10, 9, 1, 10. Even though we've got high defensive uh, stats with this card, we're really not looking at his defensive capabilities. We're looking to get the ball forward. We're looking to play him as pretty much a kind of a kind of a wing back. Even though Konami don't have wing backs in the game, we want Alexander Arnold to be hitting all of this. His box here that you see, we want him even ending up here. That's as far up along he can play as a right midfielder, and that can be limited as well if you're playing defensive fullbacks. See, if you look at Costa Corta there, who we'll get to in a second, defensive fullbacks are way more important, I think, for where the game's at at the moment. But if you are able to play with an attacking fullback, you can simply dominate the wings. Now, that doesn't mean you'll always score from wing play, but it is super fun to play possession. Again, with Trent's card, it's a very simple base of him. You've got the speed, the stamina, the acceleration. There is the build there. There isn't much to really talk about it. Like, what I would say is, like, if people are using the likes of Ben White, right? I rate Ben White genuinely. I rate him as probably one of the highest, um, the best cards I've used 
even though his stats don't really tell the tale. It's not just about stats. Speed, acceleration, kick and power, all of that is fine. His physical contact is fine, but it's about his lofted pass and it's about using his skills, right? I will do a video on the best skills as well. As I said, I'm going to hold off on a lot of the technical stuff until eFootball 25. But I mean, this build of Ben White here that you're going to see, it looks very, very average. But if you play with him on the pitch, just trust me, he is an absolute monster. So that's what you want from your attack and full backs. Obviously, Roberto Carlos on the left flank is probably the best option you can have. But there's lots of really good attack and full backs that you can use. And I would say that it is an important position on the pitch. It's just not as important as defensive fullbacks. Defensive full packs are just completely broken, which get to, we'll get to in a sec. So let's talk about build-up centre backs. Now, if you want to think about build-up centre backs, such as Van Dyke or any of those boys, Beckenbauer is another one. If you want to just keep it as simple as possible and not have it overcomplicated in your head, think of your centre back, such as Van Dyke or any build-up centre back, that's going to be your pure defender. Right, so I always give the example of you had, you know, Rio Ferdinand and Vidic. Vidic was the real dogged defender. You know, he was really aggressive, but he was also exceptional in the air and really, really, really aggressive, right, as a kind of a destroyer. Ferdinand was more of kind of like the build-up, could pass, could dribble, could bring the ball out manually, um, and, you know, really, really, like, nice build-up play that he could do, right? Same as with, uh, with you know, any of the top teams that you had with Pique and Puyol going back through the years, Ramos, um, you know, and Pepe, there was always kind of that blend, right? Even though Ramos and Pepe were both psychopaths, there was always that blend that Ramos was actually a bit of a baller as well compared to Pepe just being an absolute lunatic that was just, you know, win the ball man and all, right? So I do feel like that with Van Dijk, like these stats that you're going to be training up here of Van Dyke, this is all about the build, right? You don't need to focus too much on his speed, no matter what you do with a lot of the build-up, right? Obviously, we'll show you one of the best build-ups in the game in a second, but no matter what you do with the build-ups, right? The build-up players act differently than destroyers. It doesn't matter if they've got 80 speed, 85 speed, it will make a difference covering tracks, but essentially all you want is really, really super high defensive awareness, engagement, and aggression. And then also being able to, you know, win the ball aerially, jumping, physical contact, and all the player skills that you could possibly want as well. Aerial superiority, blocker, man marking, interception, heading, acrobatic clearance, and sliding tackle. Everything. Now, Van Dijk also does have low lofted pass and weighted pass, and that is because he is able to actually pass the ball out from deep. But with the way the game plays at the moment, I wouldn't even worry about that. I would just think as your center back that's a build up, as controlling the whole line. Your quarterback defensively, that you're not really chasing the ball you're more kind of like letting the ball come to you and then you're blocking the passing and this is a really good example of one of the top tier build-up players in the game which is an 85 speed 80 acceleration and nearly max out defensive stats Saliba absolutely insane he's definitely one of the players that is always in my squad very very solid very very beastly if you have if you want to try this build you can try it we'll go through it very quickly but you can see that with most build-up players you're always going into the deep waters with the defensive progression you're going 12 13 14 15 points sometimes and that is kind of similar to the defensive uh, fullbacks as well that you will see all right so now we're going to talk about Aldair who's down as our destroyer here we have a couple of options here for destroyer um if you want to go into my reserves I have a lot of players that can play destroyer um if you want to check them out you can and if there's any specific player you want me to focus on with in-game uh clips or whatever but Maldini you've got Makalele and Vieira who are obviously center uh, midfielders or defensive midfielders but Araujo is down Koulibaly there's a lot of really good destroyers in the game including Rudiger who's probably one of the best players that they ever release for free but with Aldeir and with all destroyers lads it follows the same pattern for pretty much all of destroyers right they follow the same pattern all the time okay and we're not going to overcomplicate it too much with the build um it's a very very simple build really and it's just about maximizing his uh defensive capabilities again you're not going to get the defense as as massive as some of the other players but you're still going to focus on tackling aggression and having that speed at 85 you will notice a pattern in all of these players that i have here right ben white 85 plus speed saliba 85 plus speed um bastoni obviously we're not going to have him in here but we do have cardoba or else van dyke who's going to go in there who's got the speed and then aldair you will notice that probably four of the five of these backs are going to have 85 plus speed when we do build up costa corta as well this is why as you saw on screen there aldair as a destroyer is genuinely your most important player in the game at the moment because you're going to be manually defending manually winning the ball back 
And simply put, lads, destroyers in the game are just absolutely broken at the moment, especially if you've got a top tier one like Aldair, or if you've got Maldini or somebody like that. They will literally just win the ball back for you with very little input if you have the ball anywhere close to them in their force field. Genuinely, right? They're like Jedis. They will just win the ball back, go through you, win the ball back very effectively and be on their way. They're way more aggressive. That's why they need a little bit more speed and acceleration to get around the pitch. And also super, super aggressive with the tackling as their highest stat. And then last but not least, we do have Costa Corta. Now, I'm going to say it, lads. I'm going to say it straight up. I do think that Costa Corta and the likes of these defensive fullbacks, I think that they're the most broken cards in the game. Whatever about the Striers, okay? Whatever about the Striers being very dominant, if you take a look at some of the defensive fullbacks that Konami have dropped in the last couple of months... I mean, it's insane. I mean, Costa Corta as a free player is just ridiculous. And you don't even need to train him that hard. You know, it's it's not that hard of a car to train up. It's mostly about whether or not he's going to, you know, max out every defensive stat or whatever way you want to train him, right? But you've got your 85 speed, you've got your 98 awareness, 96 tackling, 99 engagement, and 90 aggression. Don't worry too much about en engagement with uh, a defensive fullback. I would always find that defensive awareness, tackling, and aggression with speed will also, you know, compensate for that, right? But every player should be using Costa Corte if they have him. He's just insane. And if you are looking to go across the field for a defensive fullback, we do have lots of options in here as defensive fullback. And you can see a team that they've kind of started to bring into the game, right? If you look at Turam here, Turam is going to have, as a defensive fullback, he's going to have these stats all above 90 with 91 speed. And it goes for the same of them all, right? Bergomi that they brought in as well. Bergomi, look at his stats here with 85 plus speed. It's insane. And all of these cards have a very similar kind of pattern, no matter which card that you look at. And I feel like at the moment... Even the best player that I've ever used is probably Tommy Yashu. And you can see that way back when he had an unbelievable card. Probably the best defender I've ever used in the game. Him and Araujo. They all have the defensive fullback play style. Even the new Maldini has defensive fullback play style. And he's just probably the best in the game at the moment, you know. So I definitely feel like with these builds that you're going to see there. It is very effective if you are having the tackling over 95. And the aggression, defensive engagement and awareness can go up over 90 as well. With the 85 plus speed. The rest of the stats are not as important. Um... But, you know, skills will come into it as well, right? So, yeah, that's pretty much it, lads. We will do a video, a specific video on the play styles. We'll show you, like, in-game clips, how they act on the pitch. They are going to be changing some stuff for eFootball 25, so we're going to wait for that. But I hope this showed you how to train up your cards. We did a video on this way back, like, months ago, back in November or December. And a lot of people were asking about me to do an updated one with the free reset. So train your cards. Next up, we will have midfielders starting with destroyers, anchormen, orchestrators, hole players. How to train them up as a bit of a template. If you enjoy what you're seeing, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one.